Hey, we need a new corner. Hey, uh, man, we have to, bro. How you doing, yeah, bro? You guys got everything set up. Yeah, everything. Hey, man, nice to meet you. 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 Nice a fucking triple, bro. Like, how? For real. We, we have a, He's got a heavy hand. Yeah, he does. Uh, we have a triple threat, Jose, today. Yo, oh, we have yo. Jose, the oldest one, a.k.a. Pepe. Then we have Jose No Way, the trainer. Then we have the social media handler <laughs> over here, Jose. So whatever Jose you guys need. We got it's here. It's available. Which one. <laughs> but, um, man, we got let's, options. Let's, let's, let's get right into this, bro. Do we, it, brother. How do you get into social media? From the beginning, beginning. You know, it's interesting because, um, like, from my background, like, I would always look at other people uh, being successful, and I would see how they would run their social media. And I was like, damn, that looks dope, right? So I would try to replicate that. So I, even if you go back on my IG right now, I have content from, like, maybe 2014, 2013, around Did they there. Did that? Huh? Did they re- Did nah, they because that? I want my IG to be, like, a timeline of my whole progression. You know, so from where I started to where I am, like I removed some like ratchet shit that I don't want on there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like basically like all my timeline, like from when I started my mindset, when I started to grow, everything is on. You want to see how you evolved IG. throughout that time? Yeah, I want to. Because there's certain times like I'll go back and I'm like, man, during this time I was struggling with this or during this time, this was my transition. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a time that I can look back and see where I was in different areas of my life. How, you do you know? see, how do you see that progression up until right now? It's crazy, bro, because um, I was literally having a conversation with uh, one of my team uh, members, and I was telling him, I'm like, bro, like, this just shouldn't even be happening for me. You know what I mean? Like, I come from, like, a super small ranchito. My, I was born here in the U.S., but um, after I was born, we went back to Mexico for about five years. What part? What part? Uh, Michoacan. It's called La Mojonera Michoacan. It's a super small town that nobody knows about. You're from Michoacan, too? Bro, I saw all the most, like... That's where we get along. Bro, there, there you go. City boy, <laughs> city boy. Yeah, that's right there. Salvadorian right there. Yeah. But, yes. Yeah, okay, so yes. you beat me to that question. I
but I didn't know if it was going to be possible for me, you know. Man, you know, so just... up until what age were you there in Michoacan, or were you going back and forth? <laughs> well, I was there, uh, as soon as I was born, went back to Mexico, uh, so I was there until I was like maybe five or six, and then I came here and just been going kind of back and forth here and there to visit my grandparents. I haven't gone in a minute, but I'm definitely going to make here it. Here in the, in the city of San Diego you came, or? Yeah, San Diego, yeah. Oh, so you San Diego baby. San Diego baby, for sure, you know? Yeah, so yeah. for the people that, because you have, for the people that are just tuning in, and if they're tuning in to the version you are right now, mm. they're gonna they're figuring out, okay, well, he grew up in uh, San Diego, Michoacan, but for the OG ones, when you started YouTube and all that mm. other content, now people are like, yeah, I know where he's from. Yeah, I mean it's crazy because um, one of the most I used to get a lot of a lot of backlash because I would wear an LA hat, you know, for my people here from San Diego. They would DM me like, "You're from San Diego, take that off." Or "You're from San Diego, like, why are you worried so much?" Yeah, they take it personal. But it was because <laughs> I would get a lot of care packages from brands in LA, uh, right? Okay, okay. So when every time I would rock a hat, it was always LA uh, or like we were. Where did we? Oh, we were in, in downtown. He was wearing a dandy, dandy, dandy hat. hat. I was wearing this a, one. There's yeah. literally a D on top, and some guy just came up to me. He's like, Detroit? Detroit? We're like, He's like, hey, you what? from Detroit? Oh, I, I fuck with that shit. I was like, yeah. <laughs> nah. And then, nah, bro. <laughs> I'm like, nah. You're like, dandy. Dandy. <laughs> so shout out, awesome. shout out Danny Hats. Shout out Danny Hats. For, for supporting with the hats. And I was going to throw on the hat that I bought, but I was like, I, I've already wore that shit hella times. But <laughs> I w- I only have I only have two dandy hats. Yeah. I have. He, he he gave me one a long time ago, and then I, I bought this one. No, no I, the only reason I'm bringing that up is because when we were we had recorded on a Sunday, we went out we went out to eat after for lunch, and I was wearing one of his. I think it was like last year's releases or two years ago, but it's literally the D and it has angel wings. Mm. So it was a, I think the Dodgers were playing that day, and some girl really came up to me all press like. How are you wearing a Dodger hat and an Angels hat at the same time? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, what does a D in the wing stand for? I'm like, Dandy hats. Like, just so you know, it's Dandy hats. She was so hurt. Huh. I don't know why, bro. What are you, though? Are you a Dodgers or? I'm like. Hella pressed. I'm like, bro, like, I can tell you I'm. Soy de las chivas. Soy de las chivas. Oh, hell no. <clears throat> but this is, this is about you. So you. A lot of people started following you and have been following you because you had a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You started on YouTube mm-hmm. how, how long ago? Uh, I want to say maybe like during COVID. So it's like two years because we 2020 just started. Well, like two years. Popped yeah. off? Yeah. You know, I was very fortunate. Like everything happened in such a weird time. 2022 was like a, like a good and a bad thing for me, you know? Like during that time, my business just started taking a hit. Because my biggest clients were real estate agents and we couldn't do open houses. We couldn't do showings. We couldn't do like the normal stuff because COVID, right? Um, but then during that time, I was like, well, who do I really want to work with? Like, what do I really want to do? And I was like, I want to work with influencers. I want to be an influencer, right? So uh, we developed this like little animation, made it for Benny. Crazy. Not li- now, like how everything unfolded, it, it feels crazy, but yeah. uh, made it for him. He liked it. He reposted it. And this is when him and Alondra were at their peak, like boyfriend they're like people were saying like oh they are boyfriend and girlfriend they're not um so he showed love he reposted it and then this following day we made another one for his lady alondra she reposted it then i did some work for her for her lash brand Mm -hmm. and then it just started going from there um you did that for free yeah yeah because i was like because the thing is a lot of times like people want people don't want to do shit for free because they expect something from it right you gotta give you gotta give without expecting yeah you have to give without expectation and also too it was like you know what like this is something that i get to try and experiment so that now that i can't do traditional business i can do these animations and i can use these to like survive or like you know to make additional income and so when i put it out there like it just happened to work and it changed everything for me you know funny story the first time i ever moved out which was oh yeah (laughs) i think uh couple months prior to COVID, when my son was coming, we moved into the same apartments that uh, Alondra and Nelsie were mm, living in. That's and crazy. I, and it was wild because we ran into him like the first week. And I've always been that type of dude that if I know you're a big social media person or I, you're an influencer, 
I don't want to make you feel any different. Like mm-hmm. you're a person. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you can call us what you what people want, put a label, or whatever. But we know we're just people. Yep, one hundred percent. Oh, I didn't come up to you because I didn't know how that, bro. Just, just say hi. Yep, that's all it is. Yep. I know we we got. I jumped a little ahead. I gotta apologize. I know I jumped a little. No, nah, no, nah, it's good. But growing up for you, what kind of person were you? Were you always a dude that wanted to be on camera? Were you always a dude that was like the leader of the pack in the friend group, or like no, complete, up? complete opposite. I was always very fearful, very intimidated, very timid. Um, yeah, I was just always shy growing you seems up. Seems like a quiet. You seem like a very quiet. Guy. Yeah, like now because people see me in front of the camera, like they probably think that I've always been confident, I've always yeah. been out there because of YouTube and stuff like that. But it was actually the complete opposite. Like I was always like I had really low self esteem, um, but and then I just had to build myself to where I am today. You know, so yeah. What well, what well, for you? What was that? That flip with that switch that like. I think it. Oh man, I, it was just to the point where I just had hit rock bottom. You know, I didn't have any money in my bank account. I didn't have a car. Um, at that time, my kid's mom, she was the one covering rent. So from there, I was like, never again in my life, like, am I going to be this low, you know? And that just, just it was just that flip of a switch of, like, never going to be this again, you know? And well, then it just... Talking talk to that part, getting to that rock bottom, it's, the emotion, the feeling, how do you get out of it? Man, it's, it's a difficult thing to kind of, like, uh, put into words just because... Um, during that time, it's all you know. Everybody around you is struggling. Everybody around you is, you know, has money problems. Everybody around you is struggling. Like, you know, so everybody's just trying to survive. So I didn't really see it necessarily as, like, a bad thing mm-hmm. um, until I hit that rock bottom. So I'm like, I, like, there has to be more. Like, it, life can't be just this. Like, life can't be just being miserable, not doing the things that I want to do, not living how I want to live, like, because a lot of times, too, like, society or even as a culture being Mexican, they tell you that you shouldn't want more. You shouldn't want nice things. You shouldn't want money. You shouldn't want this because it makes you a bad person, mm-hmm. quote, unquote, right? Um, so why you spend on this? Why spend on this? Yeah, so that psychologically kind of puts you, like, in a cage, you know, in a cage that you can't step out of because if you do, first, you're going to get attacked and criticized by the people that you love the most. And then two, and then two is, like, you're going into an unknown world that you have never been to. You don't even know if you're going to be able to survive. You understand the struggle. Mm -hmm. You understand how to survive in that struggle. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay in there, right? And that's the crazy part. Uh, One of my clients said this other day. He was like, a lot of us aren't conditioned or know how to thrive when we're doing good, but we know how to survive when we're doing bad. And for me, that was like, oh, shit. Because think about this. If If you're going to go into a struggle, you're like, fuck it, I know I'm going to survive. I have the work ethic, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to do this and this. I know I'll survive, I know I'll be good, right? But how come we don't do that when we're actually doing good? You know, like when you're thriving, like why can't we have the same work ethic? Why can't we have the same mindset? Why can't we have the same drive? And that's the part that the conditioning comes into play because we're so used to struggling and working our asses off and over-leveraging ourselves that that's all we know. So we revert back to that. You get to that point where everything is working good, flowing good, good money, good health, everybody's happy. But I think the part that people forget is even though everybody's happy, are you happy? Mm. Are you okay? Mm. Are you satisfied with where you're at right now? And perfect transition into masculinity. Mm. Your child's mother is paying rent. You're there, rock bottom. How do you ask for help? How do you let people know around you that love you and you love them? Ask for help. Because I know personally, talking about myself and anybody that's watching, if you understand this, that you can be burning and literally got nothing left in the tank and you still won't ask. Mm. And you'll let yourself burn until I'll figure it out. And sometimes figuring out takes you way longer than if you would have just asked for help. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think during that time, like, you know, I think that's something that I'll always be forever grateful with my kid's mom, that she was always, she's always believed in me, you know. She's always, like, supported me, encouraged me, um, everything. You know, that's something that I'll never be able to take away from her. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it was just, I think it actually came from her. She was, like, you know, like, she was just taking care of us, you know, during that time. And I was like, you know what, like, fuck it. I'm going to start doing, like, a little side hustle. So from there, what I did is that I actually, um, I borrowed money from her to start off to buy clothes from eBay 
and then resell them to the people that I knew in person. So I was making like a little profit. So that kind of gave me that entrepreneurial jump start to be like, oh shit, people actually are willing to buy this shit. You know what I mean? What kind of clothes? Like girl clothes. Because I knew, like, girls are the ones that buy clothes left or right. Like, a guy doesn't really care. I wore you know? the same shirt fucking two years already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? These are the same pants for two years ago. No, it's still for me. Yeah. Oh, the first time we came to San Diego, I bought these pants, and they're the same ones, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to start buying girl clothes and then just post them on my Facebook. And people would buy them. You know, they would hit me up like, oh, I want that. Da, da, da. Like Entrepreneurship, over. bro. Because even when, when that hit, uh, COVID hit it. I mean, you're just at home, bro. And people, people like us that are all here, if you're just sitting around, you're just like, damn, what more can I do? Mm-hmm. There's more out there for me. What more can I do? And how you said, we're so conditioned to, to just rest. Yep. You need sleep. Relax. It's like, nah, fuck you're gonna that. You're going to burn dude. out. Yeah, like, hey, you're going to burn <clears throat> out. You're going you're gonna to get sick. I'm already sick. Mm. <laughs> What else do I need, bro? Like, what else can I do? Yeah, and people don't think about that. Stress is actually one of the biggest factors mm-hmm. that affects your health. And one of I if I, I may not be correct, but one of the biggest issues and problems in society right now is money. Mm, not enough money. Yep. Money problems and relationships and yourself. How can we print out more money? How can we get more money in the bank account? Mm. Well, there's there was a there was a video that popped up. It's like everybody wants millions, but your work ethic is pennies. Mm. So how the hell are you going to get that into your bank account? That's true. Everybody's trying to lower the bar of greatness right now, bro. Bro, we're here in, we traveled in two hours, bro. But we know the benefit out of traveling this much. Mm. When other people can't even drive 10 minutes to know, like, that's going to make you this. Bro. Mm. Like you said, you say you don't have time right now, but if I told you in an hour you're going to make this much, do you have time now? Yep. You'll figure that shit out. You'll figure it out. Yep. And it's just investing. And you we're here in your office because you invested. Mm. You took the hits. Mm. Be after getting out of this hole, what kind of person did you become? Were you more vulnerable? Were you more? Like, I was definitely was more it? confident mm. because I feel like that really was just like a switch of like, damn, you aren't what people said you were. You aren't the. That like, cause you you get bullied in middle school and high school, you know what I mean. So all that went out the fucking window, bro. Like everything that I thought I was because of what people were saying yeah. went out the window. Gone. You know, I was like, shit, I'm gonna prove them wrong. You know what I mean? And that just started like snowballing, and then I went into fitness, and fitness just amplified my discipline, and it just kept fucking going from there. You know what I mean? It just it was just like a continuous buildup of confidence that eventually became you know to what it is now. Who who were you? striving to be like who was that persona that person that you're like damn i want to be like that guy or that person i don't know bro like there's people that i look up to and i and i look up to and i see them as like damn that's what i want to be but it always reverts back on me Mm -hmm. you know i'm never like i want to be like him i'm like i want to be in that position that he is in you know it's a big difference and a lot of times like I'll, I'll look up to people and I aspire to be like people and certain things and, and characteristics. But at the end of the day, it was always me. You know, it's like I know that I can become that person. I know that I could develop myself to be that. And that's the biggest reason why I say like so many times people want to lower the bar of greatness because they think that if they lower it and they make everything equal, that's going to solve all of your internal problems. And it's not, yeah. you that's, know, it's like that's, that's the thing. That's a very big part because if you compare yourself to someone. That's extremely bad, bro. That's why social social media is. It's a, it's like a gift it's and a devil. curse because it's think about devil. this, right? Somebody said this. He's like, before you would be with your girl and then maybe here and there you will see a girl that you're like, oh, wow, she's beautiful, but you will never see her again. Now with social media, you're bombarded every single day with so many options, both for guys and girls, right? So imagine what that does to the confidence level of a girl, the confidence level of a guy. True. For a guy, it might be monetary, for a girl, it might be looks and appearances. How do you think people handle that, though? Because I always tell people when, like, <clears throat> people always compare, dog, like, oh, well, look, that person has that. Oh, dude, that person has that. Man, fuck that person. <laughs> dude, that person is this, that. I'm like, bro, like, yeah, what, what's going on in here, <laughs> dog? Bro, something, something in there is broken. Something, if you, if you keep doing that. And that's the, that's the part, bro, that people don't realize. Like, you have to look at yourself in the mirror first before you try to go external. You know? And it's not bad to get characteristics or, yeah. Um, how do you say this? 
It's not bad. It's not bad it's, to it's, compare. It, mm. It's really not bad to compare. I don't think compare is the right word. I think it's, it's mm. not bad to relate or want to be in their position, like you mm. said, because obviously you're you're striving to be better yourself, mm. and it's you versus you at the end of the day. One hundred percent. But if someone is in that position and you want to be there, that's fine. But that's not comparison. Mm. Comparison is two different things. Because I think I forgot how they say it, but it's a comparison is the thief of joy. I think that's what mm. they say. So if you can compare this out to someone, yeah, yeah. Let's say, let's say, let, yeah, we're so talking about this. We're talking word, about this right. a couple of days ago. If someone's on gear, if someone is on trend, if someone's on freaking steroids, <laughs> and you compare yourself yeah. to them, and you're natty as fuck, you're never gonna be you're never, yeah. happy with yourself because yeah, he's yeah. on something that you're yeah. not. This, is, I think, this is where we have like our balances because when he said that, I was like, you gotta, you gotta really think about it. Those dudes that are really on there, they're doing whatever it takes to make their dream. Their reality. passion, like they got no plan B, dog. There's no plan B. Mm-hmm. People that do that are putting their life on the line, and then there's people that do that just the, with the quick uh, satisfaction. Mm-hmm. But like the big, the pros, the pros, dog, that are literally having big YouTube channels and they're taking it day by day and they tell you the effects and mm-hmm. shit like that. Like those are those. Like there's a respect, right? Mm-hmm. I cannot believe that you're gonna make me millions. If you're doing this shit out of a box, mm. right? I can't believe that you're going to get me to have a six pack Facts. if you're literally not even taking care of yourself. Facts. Yep. It's about perception. 100%. It's about perception. This, we, you just talked about this before on camera. We talked about this with Leo and we've talked about this ourselves. Like big people will not take it serious if you're not serious yourself. 100%. Yep. If we were here just with a fucking cell phone or one little camera and, and, no no good audio. I heard this since the beginning. For the people that want to know how to do a podcast, 50% audio, 50% visual. Mm. You cannot have one, like, just only one or the other. You got to have both. Mm. Because the big people that are really doing it, that have found, that have the funds, that have the backup, these are million-dollar corporations and businesses that have everything. 100%. So you got to put yourself in there. Yep. I don't have that much, but I'm going to compete. Mm. There's only one of us, mm, right? Facts. You can't, you, you can't, can't duplicate yeah, us. You can't, yeah. you can't. You can only imitate <laughs> us. You can't duplicate <laughs> us. You know facts. what I mean? So for us, it's it's that, bro. Like how Dylan is saying, your comparison will kill you if you let it. Mm. You got to see where you stand, where your position is. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of I, – I agree with a lot of what he said. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily um, – there's two ways, right? Either you'll compare yourself or you'll aspire to be like. Oh, right? there you go. That's 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 the word I was you looking know? for. I'm like, dude, I was digging in there. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was a damn bar. word. <laughs> it was a I, shots. It was a shots, bro. That's IG real. For real. <laughs> nah, but know, that one clipped. Well, yeah, yeah, so I think that's what it was. You know, like I would aspire to be like certain people that I would see living good and everything. But I never once said, I never once hated on that person for being in a position better than myself. You know, and I think that's a problem with society right now. Like, everybody is just trying to, that quick fix of, like, how can I get there tomorrow? How can I do this? And if I don't have it tomorrow, this person probably is doing something or knows something that I don't. I think a a good question I really want to ask you, because you've been around really successful people. And in the second part, we'll talk about one of them that just happened about, like, two weeks ago, Mm -hmm. right? But your first time ever being in a room where you're not the top dog, you're not the smartest, you're not the... The one everybody want to go see. The main character. What's the feeling? Because you're a backup. You're just yeah. an extra. Honestly, I love it, bro. Because everything that I am today was because I was in that exact same position. I was like, imagine like a like a like a soccer field, right? The co- the reason why the coach is so important is because he gets to get a perspective that nobody else can. That's on the field, right? So when you're on the field, you're pivoting and adjusting based on what's being thrown at you. But when you're on the sidelines, you're seeing, like, everything, bro. You're seeing everything kind of happen before it actually happens, right? Yeah. So that allowed me to really dial down and, and l- like, really just soak up everything. You know, like, a lot of what they say, for them, it might be common knowledge. But for me, it's like, oh, shit. Like, it changes everything for me. You know, I, I get to kind of, like, be that fly on the wall on the back and just hearing their whole conversation just unfold and just seeing how – oh, I can apply this into my business. Uh, I can do this. I can implement this now. Like, oh, is that... Like, they're giving me a literally a visual of how of something that I can take and implement into myself and into my business. As a persona, as your self-confidence, what does that do to you, though? 
Like, do you go in there scared or do you go in there ready to learn? I'm, I go in there ready to learn, bro. Like, ready to learn. I would say that when I first kind of, um, when I first started my career, um, I was working with real estate agents, right? And so I come from, like, just working at a regular, I used to work at a bakery wearing just, like, some sweats and a t-shirt and that shit like that, right? Clocking in, clocking, clocking in, out. clocking out. So when I started uh, being, like, the real estate environment, I was seeing them with suits, nice cars, and I was like, fuck, this shit is intimidating because, first, I have nothing to talk about with them. I don't understand real estate. I don't have their problems. I don't have their cars. I don't have their lifestyle. So what the hell am I going to relate, you know? So during that period, it definitely was a transition period where I had to be really uncomfortable, and I was really intimidated. Now, knowing how real estate really works and how some people don't really got it like that, but they look like they have it, now it's like, okay. But during that time that I didn't know any better, it was like, damn, this shit is intimidating as fuck. But now it's like, I want to be intimidated. I want to be the small fish in the big pond because that's what's going to allow me to grow 10x multiple times over in a shorter amount of time than if I was over here trying to figure shit out on my own. So for the people that are scared to get into that type of room because everybody's scared of being uncomfortable. Yeah. Everybody's scared to get into something new because, nah, bro, what if it doesn't work out? Yeah. People are tell those people, dog. People are, people are too scared to being seen started at the bottom. And I feel like that's the most beautiful part of the journey, you know, because the success and the money and the things that come with it are not what are not what's going to create that internal happiness over time. It's going to be your ability to be able to look back and be like, damn, I was that intimidated kid. Damn, I was like, you know, fearful of this. Man, I can't believe I used to go through this. You know, that's the beauty of the whole yeah. process. It's not the destination. It's like being able to look back and talk with you and be like, bro, remember when you went through this? Or, bro, remember when I was going through this and I was trying to figure it out or like, you know, I was working at the bakery, f- making scrambled eggs, daydreaming about the shit that I do now. That's the beautiful part of the journey, not, you know, the progression. Because this shit, bro, all becomes normal. Hold on, bro. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Whoa. Whoa. We, we need a shot for that. We Whoa need a shot there. for that. <laughs> no, you just want to take shots. I just want to take shots. <laughs> bro, we're, we're it's like 12 in there. Hey, for the people that are watching this, where, wherever, whatever city, if you're... Oh, yeah, she got <laughs> <laughs> She's like, where are the good shots? Not because, dude, that is it, bro. Like, if you can't talk about where you started and where you are now, and there's no progression, bro, what the fuck were you doing? Like, shit. yeah, you're not, like, literally, like, it has to be something internal. Like, it's not 100%. even external anymore. Mm-mm. It's internal. Everything. You can tell me how to build this. You can tell me how to make this. You can, this, is this. But if I really don't want to do it, I'm not going to do gonna it. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I want to. I can remember clearly, and I tell what it, whoever I can invest my time into, yo, when we started this, bro, this was, we were struggling trying to get guests. Mm. We, were, we were struggling to even get two people on, or how do we do this? How do we do that? Now it's like, bro, we're so blessed because now a lot of people see the value and want to have conversations. For us, it's like, man, I want to have a conversation with 10 people, yeah. but I can only get one on a time. Mm. You know what I mean? So... I tell people, I was like, bro, when this started, there's progressions. The apartment, the house, to downtown, and now traveling. Mm. And it's just like, even coming the first time to San Diego last year, we came on a hunch. Mm. We came on a, man, hopefully he shows up. Hopefully he hits us up to <laughs> yeah. And it happened, and shit, we planted a seed, and shit, four or five months later, that shit just, boom, blossomed. Yeah, it took off. And we're just like... I tell everybody, bro, like, get out of your comfort zone, bro. You have to. If you're scared about going to this place, try it. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, life really starts, bro, at, like, the end of your comfort. And I know that sounds cliche, and you're probably seeing it, like, on a motivational fucking quote on Instagram. But it's the reality. You know, if you don't have the ability to force yourself, and I want to emphasize the word force, because that's what it takes. You know, you're not going to be comfortable going out into your uncomfortable side of life, right? You have to really force yourself to be vulnerable, to be intimidated, to be scared, to, like, go into an environment that you're not used to, to go into conversations that you don't understand, to go into an environment that you might not be the biggest fish, you know, and and that's where you really thrive. Like, success is really built in those uncomfortable moments. It's not Mm -hmm. built in, you know, oh, look at me, like, you know, me with my friends, like, you know, I'm the most successful one. No, it's not. Like, fuck that. You know what I mean? It's like, Going into the rooms where you're the smallest person in there, the one that makes the least amount of money, and no one the one that's the worst in shape, the one that's... That's 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 a very 
I feel like that's a very important thing to put yourself in that position to be the smallest in the room. Mm-hmm. And I think you said this before a week ago or so to not be the smartest in the room. Because mm. if you're the smartest in the room, who are you hanging out with? Yep. And I'm not saying that you're hanging out with dumb people. It's just you're hanging out with people that don't have the knowledge with you. Yeah. You know, just, the only way, the only the, way to do just not the right people that are going to get you to the next level. That you're exactly, to go to. and that's the only way to go is down, bro. Well, and obviously, if you're if you're the smart person in the room, I mean, if you're the if you're the non smartest person in the room, non you know most intelligent, knowledgeable, you're going to learn off of them, yeah. bro. The only way but is you, up. But you got to be ready to learn. Yeah, bro, and that's a be- bro. Like, I swear, bro. I wish bro, I just can come people- on some bullshit, bro. Because <laughs> He's like, like we can only talk like if we came here, dog, and then we couldn't come prepared. We weren't serious about our shit. And all we were looking for is just having a good time and party. What value do we add to each other, bro? Mm. I'd rather whatever group, whatever area I'm going into that I know I'm getting into, I want to add value. I mm. want you to leave out of that that place, that situation. A better person. A better person. And you may not be liked all the time. Mm. Let's be realistic. You may not you may not be cool with the other person or they might not like how you mm. dress, how you talk, whatever. Just learn something. Whether you take it and try to be similar to what we've been doing, mm. or you're taking this and that's not what I want to be. Mm. Learn from me, good or bad, dog. Hundred mm, percent. Because realistically, we're we're not gonna be liked by every single person we run into. Never, bro. Never. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Like it doesn't. You could be the best person in the world. Like it's just never gonna happen. Like that's just how life is. And I feel like if people accepted life more for what it was instead of like trying to like create this fairy tale version of it, they would be a lot happier. So how do you for you personally, how do you deal with because this is uh we started this podcast, Mental Health, man, and it's always important for us to bring this up, especially with people in and guests in your position where you're successful, you're really doing it right now, you're making your mark. How do you deal with it becoming too much? Mm. Man, it's like a entrepreneurship is a roller coaster of emotions, bro. You have really high highs and you can have really low lows, you know. And one of the key things that somebody told me was like, you can never get too, you can never overly celebrate your wins and you can never get too down on your losses, you know. And I take that at heart because it's the reality of it, you know. You got to realize that whatever happens in life, um, it's, a lot of uncontrollables, you know, and that doesn't, it doesn't define who you are. If you quit, it'll define who you are. But if you just continue to become better every single day, like eventually you'll get out of it. Eventually you'll, you know, see the end of it. You'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. And a lot of the times I feel like right now with like, you know, going into like the whole mental health thing, um, especially being a man, like we know that our responsibility is to be a provider. Our responsibility is to like be able to take care of the people that we love and be able to provide a better lifestyle and a living to you know, those that we uh, protect and love. Yeah. And a lot of times when you don't have the ability to do that or when you go through certain things in life and in entrepreneurship that kind of st- hold you back from being able to do that at the fullest, it does mess you up. You know, I think I went to like a like a rough patch during like 2020 because of COVID. My I was on track to like making it one of my best years and then it just, boom, mm-hmm. slept right. Like it got just rug pulled, you know what I mean? And it, it affected me a lot psychologically because it went from like, you know, having so many experiences with my family, going out to trying different things, doing different things, traveling, to, like, being able to barely make ends meet, you know, having to downsize my team, having to let go of my team. So a lot of that was kind of, like, it was a lot, you know. So being the provider for my family, it was, like, I'm not worthy. Like, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not capable. I'm not enough. That was that was the word of in my mind, I kept replaying, like, not enough, not enough, not enough. I was trying to be the best that I could in business. Like, I was trying to be the best dad. I was trying to be the best husband. I was trying to be all this, and it just never enough during that year, you know? Yeah. So it was a lot. It was, like, overwhelming yeah. um, until it just kind of started, like, slowly, like, exiting out of it. But it was a lot of just little wins, little wins, little wins, just chipping at it every single day, starting to take care of myself uh working out like little things that would just kind of clear my mind and eventually I exit out of it but I feel like a lot of the times right now with the mental health and and I'm not saying like depression and and all that is a very real thing like I don't ever want people to think that I don't take it serious but I think right now we're in this generation where it's people are now more accepting of saying that you're depressed than to really address the internal thing that's affecting you 
and putting you in that in that state of mind, right? Yes. It's like if you don't look the way that you look, it shouldn't be like it's okay, this it's and so, that. It's because it's so easy for uh, there's days where like I just get mad at this too because just because the word is out there and and we're being woke to this type of it's a catchphrase thing, like everybody's like I'm depressed. Well, why are you depressed, bro? Well, because this isn't working out. Mm-hmm. <sighs> bro, like go try some, go try yeah, a different like, way to make it. Try something mm-hmm. different, or do something different, or you be better. But it's like don't use that as your crutch to why you can't get up and walk. Facts, bro. Don't Somebody. don't use this word, this phrase as a reason why you can't run. The people that are that really go through this and suffer it, like you, you will never know that. Mm-hmm. Like you won't know that me or whoever is here. Hey, man, we battle depression and, yep. and self, like, just self-doubt so much, mm. but we will never let you see this. Mm. I'm never going to let you see this because, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to be yep. better. And that's the only way I can get out of this. That's because you know that's not where your story ends. Nah, bro, know? like, don't I know that. Let, I know that battle's tough, dog. Yeah, let's plant that seed right now to, like, everybody that watches. Just know that whatever you're feeling and whatever you're feeling, that's not where your story ends. And if you continue to have that thought in your mind, regardless of how you're feeling right now, like know that, again, that's not how you end. And that's always going to give you the hope to say, all right, I'm going to fight another day. I'm going to like keep pressing forward. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to experiment something different. And just having that, that awareness that that's not your end destination is going to allow for you to continue to keep pushing forward and not giving up. Because eventually you will turn. Things will turn and you're going to be out of it and be like, damn, I can't believe I was thinking that was going to be it for me. You know, that yeah. was just that was just a character building moment that has taught me to now be able to deal with this different version of myself, this different version of my environment, this different level in business, this different level in just relationships and in everything, you know what I mean? Nice. And a lot of what we go through is really meant to give us the skill sets that we need to have in order to be able to be that bigger version of ourselves and that better version of ourselves. Yeah, fuck yeah, like, me and him and, and these two guys here, like, fuck, we did. Two years ago, we weren't these type of people. Mm. We were building to be, <clears throat> and we were working towards it, but we didn't know the end goal to this. Mm. And in reality, there's never an end goal when you're trying to be better. Facts. You just, you hit progressions. You hit you hit little just, like, if you're running a marathon, you get the, to the water station. Mm-hmm. It's just that, bro, one to the next, and next until you get to your finish line. Yep, facts. And that shit just keeps growing. But um, it's wild, man. Every, every, life in general is wild. Yeah, it is. It's going to hit you in every sort of way. And life is meant to <coughs> knock you down, but it's also meant to give you and show you that, hey, it's beautiful, dog. Yeah, and I feel like if more people were accepting of just the reality of how life is, yeah. then they would be confident enough to just keep swinging and keep going, you know? Because like you said earlier, like pe- it's just like a catchword now. It's like, oh, I'm depressed. So like, are yeah. you really depressed or are you just going through like a little emotional period of your yeah. of your life, you know? And it's because, like, again, like I said, like there's people that really go through like really tough times, depressions. They've really gone through some shit in their life as kids, as teenagers, whatever that case might be, that those are the ones that, Oh, I, it's your understanding yeah. you're empathetic but even them they know that they gotta keep fighting let you me, know but let me fuck you up more though because <laughs> you grew up in a rancho mm-hmm. how do you even tune into this type of side mm. how do you tune into you need help yeah how do you tune into hey I'm Being not vulnerable. Okay, dog. Yeah. yeah like vulnerability and it's not it's not only the rancho side it's the Hispanic side yeah the Hispanic side it's the city's boy side is it <laughs> city boy city so boy. I, I, let me paint let me paint it this way right because a lot of the times as men, we think that it's a bad thing to be able to communicate or to express how we feel. But I don't, fuck, I don't know. I don't I want to say like really correctly. We think it's weakness, but the reality is that it's part of us becoming the better version of us as men. Right. Mm-hmm. Because as men, we have to be effective in knowing how to communicate, effective in knowing how to, you know, lead, um, have all these characteristics. Right. And us not being able to communicate effectively about how we feel, regardless of if it might be in that moment, it actually holds us back, yeah. right? Because yeah. now you're starting to realize, okay, well, maybe it's my maybe it's my inability to be able to perform because I'm not too disciplined. Or yeah. maybe it's my inability to be able to not tell my wife how I really feel because 
of this, you know? Yeah, I literally just finished telling my mom about this because we had a conversation about, you know, just fathers and shit like that because I, I got into a scenario now that where, you know, I need to provide and, and I need more. Mm-hmm. I need I need stability in the sense where I want to be able to wake up whenever I want and be able to be there more. Mm-hmm. But in order to get that type of freedom, you got to make sure your fucking work ethic is there. And everybody wants that type of freedom, but you got nothing to show for it. Mm. And people that have that type of freedom is because they're just nine to fivers. It's not bad, yeah. dog. Do your thing. Whatever works for you best. And that's the hard part, bro, as a dad. Because, um, so a, a little backstory. When I was in the transition period to becoming what I am now, I was, my daughter was just born, right? My first daughter. Um, I wasn't spending enough time with her because I was having to go to work by five in the morning, probably out by like one. During that time, I was prepping for a fitness competition, so I was coming back, taking maybe like a little nap, um, spending time with her, meal prepping, eating, going to the gym, coming back, study, because in the process, I was trying to become a a real estate uh, uh, loan officer, right? So I was getting maybe like two or three hours of sleep per day, and people were criticizing me because they were like, your daughter is just born. You're not spending time with her. Like, you're crazy. You're this and that. Like, so all that, like, was just devastating to me because in my mind, I'm like, I'm trying to do this for my kids. I already know that in two years, three years, you're going to see the results. But, like, you judging me right now is just making this shit ten times harder for me, yeah. especially if it comes from, like, the people that you love the most, you know, or the people that you should expect the most amount of encouragement because they truly know you, right? It's like if I, tr- if I truly know your character, if I know your heart, and I know you're spending less time with your daughter now because I know that two, three, four years down the road, you're trying to give her a better life. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to create. I'm going to support it because I'd be like, I see what you're doing, right? But the fact that it came from people that knew me the most, who knew my character, who knew my heart, and knew that I loved my daughter, that shit fucked me up, you know? And it turned into this aggression that just became like never-ending feel for me, you know, realizing that, you know, even the people that you love the most, the people that you care for the most will hurt you. Like that, bro, just changed my whole perspective in the world. And that just made me relentless and know that I can't. There's nothing in this world that can stop me because I went through it at the hardest times. I lost my brother. My mom tried to commit suicide right after. My dad has never really been in my life. I've been criticized and judged by the people that I love the most, the people who I've been the most vulnerable with. So like what external can affect me? Like nothing external can really stop me from progression and being the best version of me because I've gone through the internal aspect of it, you know? And being able to manage the internal has allowed me and equipped me to be able to, like, manage the external how it needs to be. How do you... What's the conversation you have with yourself to continue? Because as as a dad, for the people that are just turning in that don't know you, you are a dad. Mm-hmm. Dad of two. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest things, getting criticized for wanting more. Mm-hmm. Getting criticized for preparing now for later you can get the result. We did, I, bro, I just had this conversation with mom yesterday. I was like, damn, bro. Like, you know, she was like, I remember you wrote a paper of, I think the topic was, tell me the fun things to do with your dad. And you told me you had nothing to write. I was like, damn, you're right. Because he wasn't around. And it wasn't because he was out there doing whatever he, he was working, building his business. He was a one, he's a one man show. Mm. I was like, yeah, but now I understand. Mm. Now where I'm sitting, yeah. I understand why he was doing that. And then I was like, pay attention. Who did he have as a like a role model? A role model to be a dad. His dad used to beat his mom. Mm. Used to beat everybody up. Left them in Mexico. Came over here. Started a whole new life. Mm. Never was around. <coughs> My dad is the second oldest. Mm. He's the one that finished uh, university. He's the one that got a business. He's the one that that did a lot of things, bro. And he, and he takes on that role. The only other father figure he had was his was his one of his uncles. But other than that, the only thing he was ever taught to was provide, mm. provide for your family. Yep. And then there's nothing else. There's nothing else. And I I bring everybody else into it. my my mom's dad, my two uncles, everybody else. I'm like, man, I I the thing about me now is like. You got to make sure whatever area you're in, whatever environment you're in, take bits and pieces of what works for you. Mm. To me, to be a dad, to be a role model, I take the work ethic, I take how to take care of your family, Mm. and I take the sympathetic part. Yep. 
that's what works for me. Mm. If you don't like it, it it's on you, bro. Mm -hmm. This is what works for me now. For like this is why this type of conversation for for me and you it works because we're parents, mm. we're dads. My guys here don't know if they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still try to nah, figure I'm it out. Say, I'm going to ask you to say something. I'm going to send you in LA and someone looks like Dylan. <laughs> He's wearing a dandy hat. <laughs> she she threw up that plan B, you know. I'm, nah, I'm playing. Oh, nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Nah. But no, no, no. It's that. And even me and him have a conversation about his dad. And, and there's so much shit, bro. If you're... You got to be blind and deaf in order to not really hear what's going on mm -hmm. in your, in, around you. <laughs> Talking to that same person you are now mm -hmm. to the one you were before, how do you handle noise, that much noise, where you could have you could have fucking quit. Mm -hmm. You could have not been this. You could have not been here. You could have just, you know what, fuck it. It is what it is. I, at the end of the day, bro, it's like you got to know who you are, you know, like off the cameras, off of social media. Like if you know who you are, like that's really all that matters. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it's like, um, funny story when when well not funny story, right? But <laughs> like when me and my kid's mom split up, everybody was coming at me because like obviously the majority of our supporters were female, so obviously females are gonna stick to the female side, right? Yeah. So everybody was like, he probably cheated on her. He probably did this and this because during that time I was working with like a bunch of influencers, right? So she would always get messages like like do you. How do you feel about him working with like half naked women or like have this and that or girls who have BBLs and this and that? And she was she never had a problem with it, you know. Like it was never like because she knew who I was, right? Yeah. I never hid my phone away from her. I never was sneaky. None of that shit, you know. For me, my family has uh, had always been my end goal, right? Because I grew up from a broken family. So when I got my family, I was like, I need to protect this. Like this is everything that I've ever wanted, you know. And uh, so when we split up. Everybody was coming for me, bro. Like, everybody. Like, drama channel videos, doing videos saying that Fucking I was probably dating so-and-so, this and that. Um, girls were sending crazy DMs to her, bro. Like, oh, like, I knew it. You probably did this and this. Like, or with so-and-so. And just a bunch of, like, crazy shit, you know? Like, people were even saying, like, even after we addressed the reason why we, we split up, people were like, he's probably paying her to not to say anything. And I'm like, bro, like, you know? <laughs> But at the end of the day, it's like she always like um. She, All right, we're all good. So I, so I think that's it's like it's like one of the hardest things you know that you that you go through as like a dad, you know, and like how he was saying like you always, you know why you're doing it right. You're not just taking time away from your kids to not be with them, right? There's always a long term goal. There's always a, a sacrifice and the purpose as to why you're doing it, right? And a lot of times, like for me personally, like I'll get DMs like, when are you with your kids? Or you're always out working. Like how much time do you really spend with them? And this and that. And obviously it hurts, you know what I mean? Because as a dad, like, I know that I'm trying to do this to provide, but at the same time, I know that I'm missing on, like, key moments in their life, right? Yeah. You know, so, like, even my son, like, I've probably been the least amount of time with him. Um, and it hurts, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need people to remind me every single day of, like, you know, but I know why I'm doing it, you know? And yeah. But I think one of the beautiful things about it, though, is that there's always, like, a backside of the real aspect of it. Like, forget about the social media aspect. Forget about the spotlight aspect, but, you know, like, my kid's mom sent me this yesterday. She was like, because I'm prepping a birthday party for my son, and, you know, we, we, the first year, we kind of did it together, so we were just did, like, a one party, but, like, this, I don't know why, like, I'm just like, I want my son to have his own day, you know, like, yes, maybe two, three, four, five years ago, if my kids want to have a party together, we'll do it together, but I want my son to have his own day. I want him to be, you know, he's special, you know, and so I've been, like, Getting everything organized, you know, I got the gale, the jumper, a woody character. I have a, I rented, uh, I paid a guy to bring his horse and a pony so that my son, you know, it's like he's, he's getting the whole experience, you know. And then she sent me a message like, I really want to say that I really appreciate you um, th doing his birthday party for Aiden. I know he's your son and you love him and you will do anything to see them happy. But I'm really appreciate appreciative that you invest in their happiness. You work so hard for them and to give them the best possible. And I will always be thankful and grateful for you with that. I know to you, it seems only rational, but trust me, not all parents are like that. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I appreciate you as a dad, you know, and that's, how does that make you feel? Bro, that's so, 
I know me too, though. I'm like, fuck, I'm trying I'm to cry right now, bro. bro. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a kid and I'm like trying not to cry right yeah. now. That's a that's a part bro that people don't see, you know what I mean? Like I think, you know, um everything that you, that we do as like parents, like forget the entrepreneurship, the money, the lifestyle, this and that. Like I know for me personally in my heart that I do things for my kids and even though outside looking in it might be like, man, I'm not spending time with them, I'm missing out on on moments with them, but I know that when they really need me, I'm going to be there. You know, and when people say like, well, when they're young, that's when they really need you. I agree. But at the same time, those are moments that they're not going to remember. It's more for us than any than anybody else, you know. And yeah. when my kids are going through their teenager years, when they're when they're having to worry about being picked on, their insecurities, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the this, this and this, the necessities. I need money for a field trip. That's when I'm really going to show up. That's yeah. when everything that I work hard for now it's going to show up every single key moment that's going to matter that's going to shape their confidence their their ability their willingness to be the best version of themselves is going to be then it's not now you know and a lot of the times like yes i feel sad sometimes when i'm not with them but i know that i'm going to be the dad that i want to be to them when they're at that stage so of their life we we said this earlier and i think it was off camera but no it was actually yeah i think it was just in our messages like this this video, this episode, this podcast will be here forever, right? So when your kids get older and they're watching this and they're looking at their dad talk about the his journey, mm. if there's one thing you can tell them right now, what would that be? <sighs> How do I say this without crying? I'll cry with you, bro. I'm trying to cry. <coughs> I'll cry with you. I've been, I've been trying to cry for two days and I can't. Like, <clears throat> I think I just want them to know that, like, <clears throat> that at every step of the way, like, I was. Talking to them, bro. Talking like, to them. Like, if they're here right now, talking to them, bro. Yeah, if you want, man, call, your, call your kid, bro. I'm down. Like, I just, I just want, like, you know, you to know that at every step of the way, like, I always, like, just had you in mind, you know, like. When I travel, I miss you. <clears throat> like when I'm sleeping before I go to bed, I think of you. When I wake up, I'm thinking about you, like, just at all times, you know. But I know that I have to make this sacrifice now to be able to position you and your kids' kids to be able to fully enjoy them. You know, like, I'm willing to sacrifice myself the time that I'm away from you now because I know the happiness that it's going to bring you when you're able to spend that time with your kids and not have to worry about money, not have to worry about what things your kids do or don't have or just any other things. So I just want you to know that everything that I do now is for you, everything. Like, whether it might seem like that or not, whether you might agree with the time that I'm with you or not, like, just know that every single step of the way, I'm thinking of you, I'm doing it for you, and it's tears my heart every single fucking day but at the same time i know it's a process that i have to go through to really you know just change the way that you know we've been for generations you know and it's it's where i'm gonna it's either you suffer you know being miserable in an environment that you don't want to be in being broke and doing that or you're going to be miserable during the journey and the process of really building a solid foundation for your next generation, you know? And I think that's one thing that gives me that hope and that peace of mind to know that even though it does hurt, I know that long-term it's going to make sense. I know that long-term they're going to understand and they're going to realize that, damn, my dad was really a badass, you know, because he was willing to sacrifice everything, him, his internal peace, his mentality, his mind, everything to be able to provide for us and, you know, for my kids, because like I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm thinking about my grandchildren. I'm thinking about my grandchildren. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm thinking about their experience of life. I really want them to experience life. You know, I don't want them yeah. to realize that life isn't just meant to be paying bills and having to work. It's really traveling, enjoying, experiencing, yeah. experimenting different things. You know, and that's what always gives me that peace of mind to know that I know they're gonna have that moment. You know. God damn. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. And and to top it off, like for 
all those the dads that listen to us, whether you're in a relationship or not, bro, like just know like we understand the struggle that you go through, and if your dad <coughs> understand this also that your effort, your courage, your determination to provide for your family and your loved ones does not go unnoticed. You may not get the love and the appreciation that you may want, but just know people out there see it, man. And I'm, it, like, I want to, I want to say, I want to put something into context right now. Run it. There's different shapes and forms of love. Mm. You know, for a mom, it could be maybe a hug, a kiss, an affection. I think for me as a father, my love language is to like sacrifice my mental peace, sacrifice my comfort, sacrifice my internal peace to be able to know that I'm going to be able to provide for my kids whenever they need it. And that's my form of, sh of sharing love. And I, I don't think a lot of men or just people in general share that. You know, a lot of times we don't have the ability to be able to communicate as to why we do things. We just say, accept it. And that's what, it, just know that I love you. I, I don't know how to tell you why or how, but just know that I love you. But I think for me as a dad, I've realized and I came to the conclusion that my form of love to my children is to sacrifice my mental peace, everything that hurts me to make sure that they're going to be okay for the rest of their life. You know? <laughs> oh, man, it, it's, it's spot on because there's sometimes you cannot put things into words. Mm -hmm. You cannot put emotions. You cannot put feelings into words because – you cannot find the most perfect word to put it out there. Just know, like, it's you. It's always been you, right? And, you know, as, as as parents, as people that take care of other people, that like, man, there's so much shit, dog. And I'm, I'm glad we put this on camera because if you're, if you're into social media podcasting, whatever it is, just know there's always bigger conversations happening. Yeah. Some things can't get put on and some things can't get put on. Yeah. But we're here for the biggest picture, which is shining light on yourself because, man, I got to give you the flowers. You went from not being, able, not being able to provide, being a dad, finding your purpose, losing, losing your, your journey into now maneuvering into your new one mm. and you're thriving. Mm. And you, you said it to us when, you, when we walked in. I'm on a whole new level. Like, I'm just, I'm my, my mind is in tunnel vision. You're in social media. You're running social media. You're being around big names. One of the biggest names that I feel like, if anybody knows and is into this motivational stuff, is Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. Like, you're in, the room. These, in these rooms. Why social media? Why, why get into this type of field, context, and how do you maneuver into being successful? You know, I think social media just really allows, um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a form of cheating, if you will. Mm. It's like a shortcut, you know? And the reason why I say that is because when I first started getting into like motivation and all that, I didn't have the money to pay for a coach. I didn't have the money to pay for a mentorship, but the people that I would follow on social media were my mentors. There's certain little things that they would say that I would take it to heart and run with it. Put it out together. And, yeah, and just grow and, and, and build, right? And then it just and then I came to the conclusion that social media has really allowed me to get to where I want to get in a shorter amount of time because you're able to build relationships. You might not be able to know them directly, but because of social media, you build sort of sort of I mean, that's kinda what happened between us, right? Yeah. We didn't really know, but I was like, I fuck with what they got going on. You're like I like what this guy's got going on. Yeah, that shit was crazy. For the people that don't know, it literally took him doing an episode with the South Made Ron show, Cucamonga owner, Mr. Dre. Shout out to Dre. Shout out, Dre. I know you're not here, fool, but I miss you. <laughs> but it took that video, reposting that video, and it was kind of like a plan con mania. I was like, I'm not going to tag him. I'm not going to put the tag on there, the at, but let's see what happens. And, yeah, you reached out, and then I think even then we had, like, at least in a messaging back and forth, like, an hour, two-hour conversation. Yep, yep. And it wasn't, like, two sentences, thank you, <clears throat> you're welcome, thank you, yeah, okay. Oh, like, full-on fucking paragraphs. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's yeah. that's it, right? Like, have, being able to have a full-on conversation with whoever you meet, whether yep. they're new or your existing friends, if you can't have that type of conversation with them, mm. what Yeah, do you social media is such a powerful tool, and, again, like, you, you get – 
out of it what you put in. Facts. You know, if you want to just be a consumer, then you're going to so, get consumed. Yeah, because right? you get that talk like, oh, man, I was just on my phone for like two hours. I'm like, that's cool, bro. Like, what'd you do? What'd you get out of it? Yeah, you what'd know? you get out of it? Would you do anything? Did you post? Yeah. Did you get content? Did, like, what is it? Yeah. And I, I mean, I just tell everybody now, like, <clears throat> all right, we, what you do for free, we don't do it for free yeah. no more. Yep. And that's the beauty of it, right? You know, I think, um, you know, kind of a little bit of background on me, like the first time that I ever really understood the power of social media was for whatever reason, bro, uh, I share this story often, right? Um, this guy who was a real estate investor in Chicago, like popped up on my Facebook, right? I didn't, wasn't following him. We weren't friends, like nothing like that. He just popped up on my, on my profile and he was saying, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, I'm in a place in my life where I just want to give back. I want to help somebody, this and that, no expectations. And I was like, what do I have to lose? This is before anything, bro. I was working at a bakery, like yeah. nothing, bro. I didn't have anything of value to give to him. And I was like, hey, man, you know, like, I'm in this stage of my life. I, I know that I'm capable of more, da-da-da. Like, you know, I've always had a thing for real estate. I read this book, and it gave me, like, that, that man opened the doors for me. He gave me his phone number. He connected me with somebody here in San Diego that can help me and guide me. That's where I interned. Um, and that guy really changed my life, you know? Like, everything that unfolded came from him. Because from there, it, it gave me the confidence to be like, if this guy sees something in me that I might not fully yet see in myself. Yeah. And I see where he's at. Like, I'm going to believe him more than I believe myself. You know what I mean? And then that just escalated to everything that I am now. So again, the power of social media is so powerful. Like there's going to be people on there that are going to change your life and impact you, whether it's with something that they say, or if you reach out and they're able to point you in the right direction, like do things without expectation, but know that there are people out there that generally want to do good by others, regardless of, of anything. They don't want anything in return. None of that. This guy never asked me for anything in return. He just like, you're going to repay me by you being successful. Mm. And one of the things that, like, I've never said this, right? But I think, I don't know, maybe this year or by next year, like, I want to be able to say, like, I want to be able to fly to Chicago, go to his office without him knowing, and be like, because of you, this is everything that I've built. Like, I own a company because of you. I live in this place because of you. I provide this because of you. Like, you open doors. You open it, the doors. It takes, it takes that one person to be like, bro, I believe in you more than you believe in you, but really? I just need you to realize yeah. this at one point. And, and it's about helping. 100%. Helping others without expecting anything in return. He helped you without even giving it, maybe not even giving a shit of what you were going to give back. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, well, let's see where this goes. Yeah. And sometimes you do that. You... You take a chance blindly and hope, hope for the best. 100%. I feel like that's the best, bro. Yeah. Because if you're doing something and expect something in return, you're not doing it for good reasons. You're doing mm. it for your own benefit and yeah. stuff. You get let down for sure. And 100%. you have that expectation. All right, I'm going to give this dude a chance and I hope for him to be successful. And if he's not successful, you're like, damn. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, be also being on the other side because of, like, I want to give people what he gave to me which was an opportunity or even like a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Max. And I've given that opportunity to other people. Like, I never talk about this stuff. Like I have DMs with people that reach out to me like, Hey, I'm barely getting into content creation, but I don't know how much to charge. I don't know how to start this, this and that. I'm like, bro, like bam, 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 give them the whole breakdown. And they're like, yo, I landed that contract. Or, yo, I landed this deal. You know? So those are the things that I internally make me happy. That stuff that never goes on social media. But those are the exact same things that I want to be able to give back to my community because I know the impact that he had on me. So how do you how do you give that time to people? So I, I try to give it to as many people as I can. But the moment that I start seeing that they're not doing anything with it, I detach. Mm. Right. Because there's a commitment and a level of sacrifice that it takes that it took for me to get to where I am. Mm. Right. It was a lot of pain. It was a lot of struggle. It was a lot of uh, tough times, a lot of, you know, moments where it was painful. Right. Yeah, and if you're not willing to go through that pain on your own independently, I can't do that for you. You know, so if I know that you don't have the work ethic and the commitment to like go through what you need to go through in order to become that version that you say you want to become, yeah. like I'm not gonna carry you there. You know, I can't force a water. I mean, force a how do you say it? like force to drink water. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's the reality. Like I'll give people the benefit of the doubt, and I'm like, yo, like let me help you out. So are you good with losing people? Hundred mm -hmm. percent. At this point in my life. 
I'm great at losing people faster. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times we try to hold on to people as long as we can because we're like, ah, oh, well, this person kind of meant something to me. Ah, oh, this person kind of, you know, we share a little, a little thing here and there. But the reality is that the longer that you prolong that, the longer that you're holding yourself back and hurting yourself. The faster that you're able to let go, and if people want to step up and then maybe catch on later down the road, then let it happen. But I think one of the things that I wasted a lot of time and effort and just internal peace was trying to save people or take people through a door that was only meant to fit me. What the? Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> You're like, that's me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It's like, I take it into consideration, like, man, well, this person was there for me when I needed it. Mm-hmm. But then along my journey, that was it. Yeah. There was nothing in return. Yeah. There, and it's not like, you can't expect to be, it can never be financially. Yeah. It can never be financially. People will give in order, when they want to give. But it was one of the, it, it's like when it's a trending TikTok that's happening, but uh, you wanted me to save you when you needed saving, but when I needed you, you were not, you were never mm. around. Hundred percent. So how can I save you? Mm. How do you want me to be that for you when you were not that for me? Mm. It's not your fault. Maybe that's just how you you were built in a sense. Yeah. But I know what I need and what I want in my life, right? Mm. People are going to come and go whenever whenever the time comes. Yeah. There are chapters in your life, and in those chapters, characters got to be replaced or gone, and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. We said this, it was just last week. Mm-hmm. Just because I am here now and you're not there it doesn't mean it's my fault. Mm-hmm. What did you do in order not to be here anymore? Mm-hmm. I wanted to bring you. Mm-hmm. I wanted you to be along my journey the whole time. Yep. But what did you do in order not to be here, bro? Like, it's not my fault you're yeah. this. Yep. And people start blaming, dog. Like, yeah. I hate it. Because it's easier to blame than to take fault for it. Responsibility for it, you know? You know? Yeah. Like, the, the, last thing, the last thing people want to do is take responsibility for their actions. 100%. For the reason they fucked up or for the reason that they're not there with you in that position. Yeah. And it's, is I've, I mean, we're not going to bullshit ourselves. It's easier that way. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Fuck pretty, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think the, the, stro- the challenge with that, too, is because a lot of the times, like, you know, it's like, if you're coming to me now that I'm this version of myself, like why, you know? And it might, and so a lot of times it, maybe it might not be that they just want what you have or to a shortcut to, to that. Right. But at the same time, as you having gone through your process, you're like, why now? Like I was the exact same person. Like before my environment changed, I was already this. This Why are you now showing love until my environment changed? I think what I tell everyone, what I used to tell a lot of people was like, do better and see who's around you, mm. right? Like right now, if we had nothing to offer, no, you know, maybe who, whoever's around us. But when we change scenarios, everybody wanted to be around mm. us. When I got, when I moved out of my parents, everybody wanted to come around. When I did this and, and different accolades that are just happening, now people want to come around. Mm. Well, where were you when yep. there was nothing? Yep. When I was, was still the same person. Yep. It was just a dream. I was the same person. I get people now like, oh, yeah, bro. Like, he's always been motivational and always been this. Where were you? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. 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 Hey, and for the people that don't know, and I'm sure you know this, you don't need to tag somebody mm-hmm. anymore in mm-hmm. order to know if they reposted you. Yep. I hate the fact where they just show, hey, man, I believe in congratulations. I always knew you had this. Mm. Is it because I had this person on? Or is it because I'm here now? Yep, yep. Is it because you want to be around me now? Mm. Because if you weren't around me when I was struggling, you can't be around here when I'm on my two feet. Mm. Cannot. You did. You don't deserve that. Mm. Only people that deserve that when there are the people that are in the trenches with Facts. me. Right when this wasn't here, who was with me? Yep. I had the same people. Mm-hmm. Right, and the people that are not here, they they had different journeys. Yep. I don't blame you. I can't blame you. I can't be mad, bro. There's, There's no resentment, but it's like they can't also expect yeah, just for and it to be. I think me and you can, we, we can, like, uh, relate relate to this, dog. Like, there's nothing in me left to feel something for somebody else. Yep. I can't. It's gone. 
I, it's gone, bro. Yeah. I can't be mad. I can't be angry. I can't Facts. give you. I can't give you this, re- like that energy on myself anymore. Yeah. I cannot. Everything's invested over here, and everything that I once had to give up, I it, it got lost. Mm. I lost everything. Same. I can't no more. So if you're mad for whatever reason, bro, that's you. I can't fight. Yep. Only fight I got left is with my kids and myself. Yep. It's true, uh, and it's crazy that you say that because you're super fucking spot on. Like I literally feel the same way. It's like I no longer have that guilt yeah that i no longer have that like i gotta go out of my way for people or i gotta prove to people that i am a nice person or that i am a good person or that this this and this like yeah. that's gone that version of me bro is gone out the wind like out the window like unless somebody that i see me like man this person's like really trying or this and that then maybe right but in terms of me being a savior for other people it's gone yeah you can't you can't save everybody you can't bro you can't help everybody there's a quote that says saviors get crucified, you know, and the, and it's so powerful because it's like, you're going to go through a period of time where you're going to try and save people because of your level of awareness. And now that you know better, you think that others should do better as well. Right. But since they don't have that perspective and they haven't been in your shoes to be able to understand that they're never going to connect with you. So the more that you try to help, you try to save, you try to empower and, and bring people along your journey the more that you're actually detaching from them because they are not that, you know, as, because your your world just changed, yeah. but theirs is still the same. Facts. You know, there was a, a person in my life that, let's say we, we grew apart for maybe like, let's say two years, right? We weren't talking, but I had a lot of love for that person, right? So within that two years, I grew a lot mentally, uh, uh, my awareness grew, my perspective. Mm-hmm. I was very understanding, m- more aware, right? A completely different person. And so two years passed, and then this person, I kind of started talking again, right? And so I'm like, okay, cool. Like two years passed, you know, maybe maybe he's different, you know? Like maybe we both uh, grew, and now yeah. we're more mature. Now we're both more aware, and, you know, we'll be able to move forward and have a better friendship. Went back to that, literally a month in, bam, again, same person, you know? But it's like, it, and that really painted a picture for me, and it made me realize that it doesn't matter how much I grow, that doesn't mean that other people are growing as well. And that has nothing to do with money, it has nothing to do with possessions, it has nothing to do with that, it's just awareness. It's personal. It's a personal development, it's, you know? It has nothing to do with me anymore. mm at all <laughs> that thing was the thing that allowed me to let go of that version of me that was trying to save people mm. right because just because i like again like i said just because i grew that doesn't mean that everybody else is or that everybody else wants to and yeah. a lot of a lot of people are just like bro obviously yeah, you're you have way more following than me you have way more following than him been in, I've, been in the game long a lot of people are just and I'm pretty sure you heard this before. Hey, you changed a lot, dude. Yeah. It's like, no, I have not changed a lot. A lot has changed me, bro. Mm. You know? That's a bar. A lot has changed me. Yeah. And Damn, that's a bar. <laughs> that's a, that's it's a, a bar. fucking bar. And that's a clip. Yeah. <laughs> you said it, it's personal, bro. Yeah. I mean, things that affect me don't affect you, and I have to change in order yeah. to adapt to those situations. To survive. Know? Exactly. And it comes back to what you said with your family. Your family teach you how to survive, bro. Yep. And I relate to you a lot because I'm first generation here, dude. Same. And my parents taught me how to survive. Mm. You know, there's been moments where my parents survive on $20 a fucking week. Mm -hmm. And we stretch those $20 as much as we fucking can. Mm. But they put us in in that position where like, all right, survive off $20, survive off $20, survive off $20. 100%. And it's like the moment you're trying to grow and get into somewhere better, they're like, no, you have to survive off $20. And it's like you're trying to teach them like, yo, that's not the way to go. But you can't blame them because that's, that's what they know. That's yeah. what they know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's true. just like, bro. One of my first risks that I took was uh, buying a Mercedes when I could barely afford it. It was a $600 payment, bro. And I was working at a bakery making maybe twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. You bought a Benz? I bought a Benz. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, but b- b- because during that He's time, baker of the year right my there. son, my, my, my daughter was just born, right? And so our car was unreliable. So it's like, how am I gonna have my how am I gonna have my daughter, my baby, 
in an unreliable car, right? So I'm going to be driving around, and then it doesn't start, and now I have to be hired, calling a tow truck with my baby? Like, hell no, you know? It's like, I'm either going to buy another unreliable car that can potentially break down and go through this and spend money there, or I'm much rather just take the hit every single month knowing that that car is reliable. Yes. And even though it's costing me more, but I know that it's going to get me from point A to point B, and I'm never going to have to struggle with my daughter, or my, my kid's yeah. mom is never going to have to struggle with the car just randomly stopping, right? Yeah. And again, people are like, well, why? Why? Why are you doing this? Just go buy a Honda, go buy a Toyota, go buy this, you know? But that's conditioning. <laughs> That's conditioning, that's conditioning because to the bare minimum, bro. And yes, exactly. Because they know that if you have that type of car, you'll be able to survive, right? Without realizing that going up above from that, it stretches you to now have the awareness and the confidence level to be like, yeah. I can survive at this level now. And it's it's know? not it's not so much. I, I know what you're saying. It's not so much of surviving at this level. Is living, bro. Living. You're living at that literally, bro. Time. You're not surviving. You're switching from surviving you're to fucking living. Living, dude. Yep. Is and you're not going too much off of like fucking Rolls Royce now or nothing. Mm. You're living. Yep. Yeah. What, it's, what, it's, I'm gonna blow your mind, right? <laughs> My client. Never Rolls Royce in the garage. I need. <laughs> oh shit! I fucking need. Next it. Go. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Shout out to Marcus. He's one of my clients, but he's also somebody that I look up to and somebody that I consider my mentor. Right? Uh -huh. He said, "Us as like uh, the minority. Let's say the the bar of to start is right here. Us as Mexicans as Blacks, we start here. So we have uh -huh. to crawl and fight just to get to the bare minimum. You know what I mean? Pretty and much. And that right. like I was like, oh shit, I didn't think about that. And that goes to what you were saying. It's like this is survival." Yeah. This right here is starting to live. Yes. You know, anything further that, that's living. But we first have to crawl out of this, which is what we're known to. And even once we start climbing up a little bit, we're like, oh, no, no, this is weird. Like, I got to go back down. You know, psychologically, we condition ourselves to come back down because even though it might be shitty, we know that we can survive we in can a survive. shitty situation. We're, we're comfortable we're there. We're comfortable there. We understand how to sacrifice and survive and Barely, you know, get, and get by. The, the thing about that is exactly what you were saying. We have to go up to that level. Yep. And for society, for our people, is that's not just the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. That's getting to live. To live, to start. But for everything else, yep. especially in this country now that everything is freaking expensive, yep. that's the bare minimum for them. Yep. But for us, it's like, damn, we're making it out of there for once at well, least. One of the... the re how do I say this? Because it's going to sound really fucking arrogant. And I don't want it to sound say arrogant. Say it. Fuck it. Just. Man. Yeah, so going back to kind of what we were talking about, I think one of the moments that I that I realized that I was, that everything had changed for me was when I realized that I can just walk into like a grocery store and just grab whatever I wanted without like having to worry about the price. That little thing just changed everything. And being able to go to the gas station and fill up my tank completely every single time. Man, that's like that for me has impacted and shifted more than anything else. Even and let's take it even further. When you're, excuse me, even when your kids, when they want something, you don't gotta look at the price. One hundred percent. You know, and one of the one of the things even like my dad, my dad implemented was like, wherever you're at, you're in a. My biggest thing, you go on a trip. I don't want to budget. Mm. I don't want to look at price tags. I don't want to look at prices. You want it? You want to do it? We're here Let's one time, dog. 100%. Why not live? Why not live in the moment, live in the truth? Like, you've worked so hard for Why don't you deserve this? Yep. Right? And he taught me that. So even now, I may be struggling a little bit or when the situations happen, but when my son wants something, bro, <laughs> I've worked my ass off, bro. Here bro. you go. My, <clears throat> we understand this, and this is going to be a clip. My kids will never feel anything I had to go through mm. and will never feel the struggles I had to go through mm. because their their dad will lead them into a better situation and Facts. prepare them for it. Facts. They're going to have their own situations. It's not neglect the obvious. It's it's life. It's going to happen. Always. But I can promise you that they will not feel one thing that I felt personally. I will mm. not put that on them. Exactly. It's so There's, much, dog. You know, you, you hit that shit spot on because one of the things that... um. I would always tell my kid's mom is like, I don't care about what I'm wearing. I don't care about none of that. But the moment that you or my kids need anything, I want that shit to be at your feet. Yeah. You know, and that's my mentality. That's the, that's my love. 
yeah. you know so when earlier when i was talking about how like my love language is like sacrificing myself that's what i meant bro so, like uh it was like two weeks ago my son's birthday week so usually like you pay for comfort mm-hmm. right you pay yeah for literally so when they ask us about a haircut i pay 60 dollars mm-hmm. i get appointment mm-hmm. i get good haircut i get treated good that's it my son got a haircut that week and it was a different barber but shout out Aldo, one of my guys. Just because it was my son doesn't mean I give him I give him less. Uh-huh. It's his price, and I still give him a tip. And then my son gets expensive because he was the only reason I got him into a haircut yeah. was like, I'm gonna buy you a toy after this. Yeah. There goes another twenty, thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. There's all sixty. Yeah. Budgeting. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not spending sixty on me this week, I'm spending sixty on you. You need it more than mm-hmm. I do. Or I wanna ex- I want you to experience it more than I want. I to. want you to feel good and look yeah. good for your yeah. birthday because I know I would do the same, mm. right? And I think there at this point now where this show is ending is there's no there's no limit to what we will do for our loved ones, for our kids, 100%. for our family, for our friends. Facts, right? bro. Mm-hmm. Like here, if we got to give up, whatever we got to give up, without a with, without a doubt. Yep, true. Kevin Gates says it best, bro. I'm that I am that sacrificial lamb. lamb. I love you, bro. <laughs> Facts. That's why I've been listening to him a lot lately. Call me at he's, three in the morning. Yeah. I'm up. Yep. I, I'll die for you. I'll yep. kill for you, dog. Yep. Like, it's true, bro. That's what it is. And people don't understand, bro. Give your people a hug. Tell them I love you, whether you're guys or girls, and you will understand what that means. Mm. You understand who you're gonna ride with. Mm. You may not like this person next to me, but I love him and I ride with him, mm. no matter what happens. Mm. And some people don't know what that love is because yeah. that's first, a different type of love because it's a painful love. At first sign of turning your back on them, they'll do it. Mm. Nah, bro, let's go through the gutters. Let's yeah. go through the trenches, it's whatever true. the case is, dog. Bro, I agree with you 100 fucking percent. Like, it's ev- funny how you sent me the video and I'm like, are you listening to Kevin Gates? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to him a lot because a lot of the shit that he says is so accurate, you know? Like, one of the things that I always think about, it's like, um, for example, like my daughter. Like, she's, her perspective of life is so fucking different, bro. She's like, Daddy, I want this. I'm like, all right, let's go get it, you know? Daddy, I want-. I'm not saying that I give her everything because I don't want her to be spoiled yeah but at the same time it's like her level of perspective is so different you know like her when she talks about wanting something she's like i want a house i never even fucking thought about that when i was a kid i just wanted a toy (laughs) and if if that you know what i mean her thing i was like mama what do you want for your birthday she's like i want to go to hawaii like her level of awareness and perspective <laughs> it's at a different ball game you know what i mean i'm like yeah. i couldn't even think about a house or think about a I trip a chunk of cheese so dog. Yeah, yeah, I mean, or so. <laughs> yeah you know my both my daughter wants starbucks like all these things that i'm like i was okay my mom bought me fucking tampico you know what I mean? My mom put, put me in fuck. If I got lucky and luxurious, if I got a lunch bowl. The great value of orange juice. Hey, if I showed up to elementary with hot Cheetos and fucking sandwich, I was a fucking bomb. Yep, it's true. Hey, I swear to God, I remember when when like when 50 Cent came out with shoes, the Hurricanes. Bro, I all had the G in it. I had the Hurricanes on my feet. Bro, <laughs> I was lit. But I was still fed, though. It wasn't cool. That wasn't cool, kid. That wasn't cool, kid. <laughs> not going to lie. You know, more of the story is you can fake it, but you can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was yeah, in, bro. I was, I was in elementary fucking with Payless shoes, dog. Bro. <laughs> hey, but hey. Well, Payless shoes are expensive now, bro. You're talking about oh, like 60 bucks. I had, one, I had one of one of the uh, people the other day was like, because I was wearing my dunks, and like, bro, I like, they're, to me, they're just shoes, right? Like, they're just shoes. And I was just like... Bending down, and they were like, dude, why would you bend your shoes? I'm like, watch this. Bending them again. Dude, why would you? Because they're shoes. Bro, people like, people hold too much value to materialistic positions. I was like, don't get me wrong. I know there's certain shoes that hold a lot of value and can make you more money. I was like, but when you're like me and, you know, you buy shoes every so often, I was like, I the reason I do this to my shoes is because I wear them on my feet, right? I wear them all day. But I know I can buy more if I wanted to. That's the part. I can buy more if I really wanted to. People take care of this because they know they can't get no more. Like, bro, if you if you leave these cameras in the lobby and don't get them back, I'm gonna beat someone <laughs> yeah. up for it. He looks at me. I left the camera once before, yeah. bro. We had a call from when we're at Chicago. 
hey, um, did you guys leave anything? I was like, no, why? Did you, any chance leave a camera? I left that I'm camera like, right there. I, I left like, it in the car. Um, I think so. Uh, can you describe it? And I described it. Yeah, it's right here for you. I just looked at him like, okay. I'm going to put you on camera now. There's a insurance company called Next Insurance for, like, videographers and content creators, right? So let's say, for example, you're coming here, right? You know you're here. You'll put on the insurance my address, uh -huh. and if something was to happen to your cameras, like, let's say somebody trips over and the camera drops, the lens breaks, everything, they'll pay you for it. And, like, you're, it's super inexpensive. I need to do this. Le if you lose it, if you're, let's say you come here and somebody breaks into your car and it gets stolen, it's covered. Yeah. Oh yeah, he this motherfucker is somewhere no, always breaking his stuff. He has the worst. Yeah. Thing. yeah. And well, let, let's put it cut. Do you have your no in your in your in your vehicle? Do you have your windows tinted? I don't. No. But it's because I'm on the. Okay. Car. That guy never has windows tinted, and it's oh, always yeah. got broken into. Yeah. Same. Well, I just same, never same. leave shit in there either way. Mine's That's a fish. Mine's a fucking fishbowl. Like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. I really don't give a fuck. First but, of all, what the? I'm not even doing anything in there. That's like no, just, I think one, I don't of, want the, people to one see. of the quotes that like Kevin Gates has said, and to end it on that one is, uh, they asked him like, "How are you feeling?" He was like, "I'm fighting for my life right now." Mm. And you don't know what that feels like, but when you do, you'll realize like where I'm at. Fuck. Like that's it, bro. Like how you feeling, bro? I'm fighting for my life. I don't know if I'll be good today. I don't know if tomorrow will be promised, but I'm doing the best that I can. Mm. However that however that comes, right? Mm. So I was like, damn, bro. And I've listened to this, and I tell her, it's like, maybe you don't like his music, but listen to his interviews. You'll yeah, he's, he's love, dog. super like, intelligent. You'll, you'll understand what that all means. Yeah. But we came into, like, a whole new segment, and I thank everybody for commenting and their questions. Questions, um, questions. One of the ones this time... What do you think of society's of society's idea of what a man should be? Uh, that wasn't you today. This hey, time you know how you? He said that we were ending, bro. Well, this should just open up a can of worms. You know what I mean? We'll go get ready for the thirty more minutes. <laughs> yeah, bro. Honestly, ah, bro, this is such a powerful topic, and the reason being is because I'm gonna be straight up with you. Before Andrew Tate came into the picture, I was so conditioned by the woke. Uh, culture, yeah. right? Obviously, I'm accepting and 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 I respect everybody and the way that they choose to live their lives. So I have no problem against anybody, right? But I was getting so conditioned, bro, to like being weak, to being like emotional, to being like I don't know, like I was. It just wasn't me, you know. Like, yeah. and until Andrew Tate came into the picture and he started saying, "I'm not saying that I agree with everything that he says," but. He has a great point. I think as as men, we are meant to suffer. As we are meant to sacrifice and struggle and go through hardships to become the best version of ourselves, right? Like th think about what I was telling you earlier. I come from being somebody that felt worthless. My my brother passed away. My my dad was never in the picture. My mom tried to commit suicide. Um, I was bullied throughout middle school, high school, everything, right? So this whole entire, my half of my life, I just felt worthless, like a nobody, like I didn't even matter, right? I know my mom's situation was different because I can only, I, I don't ever want to know what it's like to lose a child, right? Yeah. That's an unbearable pain that I don't even know if I can handle, right? But me processing that, I felt like I wasn't worth anything, Right. Until I snapped and I realized that I can develop myself to being who I wanted to be, to be somebody of value, to sacrifice, to be disciplined, to build my character, to build my confidence, um, to be the man that I want to be, to be the, at the level of status that I want to be. That's when life really started getting fun for me Thanks. because I realized that everything it's kind of it's kind of like a video game. You know what I mean? It's like you get to level up the harder you fight. You're going to go and you're going to fight the boss of, let's say, level two and he might fuck you up. But then you're going to come back, and then you're going to beat him up. You're going to find the different strategies. You're going to find a different way to get around it and, like, dodge a couple punches and, you know, get better jabs or better combos. And that's just how life is, you know? And I think a lot of the times, like, right now, like I, I was saying earlier, everybody's trying to lower that bar of greatness to create equality. There's no such thing as equality at all. It doesn't matter. Like, we, we do all have the equal opportunity to become who we want to be, but that's about it. 
You know what I mean? Like, there's no other way from taking a, away from hard work, dedication, discipline, consistency, sacrifice, tears, years, all that. You know, and we have to be embracing and accepting of heart of life's harsh realities, not try to lower the bar of greatness. And if you nice. feel insecure about things that you I, like, if I'm your boy, I'm be like, bro, like you better fucking step the fuck up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's no other. If I baby you, I'm only feeding into your depression. Yeah, I'm only feeding into your weakness. Yeah. I'm only feeding into you going downhill. And mm-hmm. the only reason I feel like only only reason people. <clears throat> feed into that and give you give those people that is because they don't want them to become the better version of themselves because the better version of themselves may not include them in the picture. A hundred percent. People are so scared of letting or of losing people. Yeah. And they don't like I don't want you to be better because better might be that I'm not there no more. Bro. And if, and it's gonna happen. Yeah. Bro, I've had friendships throughout the years where the moment that I take that next step to that level up they're like crawling to like hold on to me. You know what I mean? And it might it might be in a way of like them trying to say like trying to like make you feel bad. Oh, yeah. you don't you don't hang out with me no more. Oh, you don't you know you don't you don't text me no more. Or oh, you don't do this anymore. It's like, bro, like I'm if you have access to me, know that everything that I go and I get access to, you have access to. Nice. But if in your mind you can't see that, I can't save you. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you like hand holds you i'm like bro come on come on come on it's not gonna happen it's like yo if like me and you are like grinding right and if i i open this door that i'm like fuck this door can change my life so much you have access to that right and if you can't see that i shouldn't have to tell you that you have access to that based on our relationship and on our friendship you should know that based on my character based on the the you know, the, the tightness that you have with me, you should know that if that, if I open that door, that means that you have access to that door too. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people see that when you have access to a specific door, that means that, oh, they're getting left behind. When in reality, that's not the case. Yeah. But it's based on that specific person's character, not who I am as a person. Yeah, that could be, this could be a whole new podcast right. right there. Yeah. It's about to go into there. You know? Uh, yeah. Um, so there's another question. And I think this one fits really good for you for you right now. How often do you give yourself the flowers you deserve? I think. A l- where's that moment where you, where like you gotta sit back? Because it's a double edged sword. You know, because like how I was saying earlier, like there's gonna be moments where you, when you when you get a win, and now you're celebrating. You're doing extra things you're spending more money on this you're going out more you're forgetting what got you there in the first place yeah you lose sight of that nice. right and so i think conor mcgregor said this like you you go to sleep with a win you wake up with a loss and i take that shit to heart bro because it's true it's like me being here i could be going out partying every single day you know doing this this and that but no what got me here like i need to fucking work even harder yeah. because now i'm here you know what i mean yeah and so yeah. i i'm I think the better word or the better way to say it is to just be more graceful with yourself mm-hmm. instead of um, stopping and smelling the roses or whatever, you know? Like, I think there's a, a a big, I don't know how to say this, bro. Like, we all want to, we all want to celebrate too early. If And, and a lot of times, like, that's what limits your growth and your potential because now you make mistakes now you start losing sight of you know the the goals and the directions that you're trying to head into it. And, and my client said this to me the other day when we were talking is like you, the reason why i never stop is because the moment that i stop now the all the people that i employ could lose now all the people that i feed won't have the ability to feed their family now all the people that i impact are not going to be able to be impacted you know and it's okay to celebrate but just don't over indulge yeah, in there's it. There's a time frame. It's there's a time, a time frame. frame. It's like cool. Like I'll celebrate it. Bam, get back to work. Yeah, like yeah, just even just in coaching, <coughs> we want to play off yesterday. Celebrate right now, bro. But as soon as we get wake up tomorrow, come come at five p.m. We're back to you this. know who said this? That show was like mind blowing to me. Kobe Bryant. Somebody says like, "Oh, you made it to the league, or you made it to this and that." And he's like, "Aren't you happy?" He was like, "What's there to celebrate? Job being finished. Job being done." Yeah, job being finished, and and that, that is it, right? Like, 
Think about everything you're doing. Be happy. Be grateful. But just know, hey, if you got this far, what else can what else can you? Hundred percent. That's the beauty of the journey. And one, I think this one's a good one. I think we can all relate here. Is what do what do? Damn, some people gotta got an English classroom. <laughs> 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 no, a little, uh, I'll read it how it is. What do when Hispanic parents are the main source of your bad mental health? So, Oof. what do you do when your Hispanic parents are the main source of your bad mental health? Oh, that one. I that's mean, a good one. That's a good one. Um, what do you do when your Hispanic parents are, are the main source of your mental first health? First of all, I think personally, you forgive them because mm-hmm. they didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my parents have told me stories about their parents and their parents were abusive to them. Mm -hmm. And they only know how to raise a child a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I forgive them and I don't blame them for what they did to me before. Because it's like, that's the only way you learn how to raise a kid. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, you forgive them no matter what. Yeah, I agree. Second of all, you try to give them the life that they never really got because they were never really, they they were really kids, you know? Bro. Especially my parents. I mean, my parents are from the FA, the city of Mexico. You got to fucking learn how to survive in there, bitch. You know, you got to learn how to survive. You don't You don't live a childhood like any other, you yeah. know? Yeah, I had so. um, to add on to that. You know, one, I was resentful for a period of time with my mom because she was always very explosive, very reactive, you know? And the thing that I would do wrong, she's like, it's a pendejo, like this, this, and that. So I'm like, Damn. you know? So, it, like, I grew up, like, I'm like, my mom fucking thinks I'm a loser. You know what I mean? And so, but now as I'm older, I'm like, damn, I can, I can't even fathom what it was like to lose a child. Your husband leaves you. Um, like you got to take care of your only son. Now you don't make a lot of money. You're renting people's rooms. You're living in garages. You're going outside of churches, um, asking for food. Like, like think what that does to you as a parent. You know, and and that gave me the perspective to be like, it was never that my mom didn't love me and it was never that my mom wanted to hurt my feelings, but it was just her only way of survival, her only way of expressing what she was going through. Like if it was leaking onto me, her child, somebody that she loves and she would have given her life for, I can only imagine what her internal was. True. You know, and that's the part that a lot of times as children of that type of generation of parents, we don't stop and think. We all make, we make it about ourselves. We make mm-hmm. it about, oh, my dad talks to me this way or my mom is in loving or my mom is in affection. Like your mom is teaching you how to survive. Your dad is teaching you and giving you the skills to go through life, right? And one of the key things that I, um, like that you said that I want to add to where it's like give them a better life. The moment that I saw my mom generally be stress-free, happy, worry free for the last let's say 20 years was when we were in Santorini in a pool she was laughing with my daughter she was tickling my sister um like I've never seen my mom like that you know and we've you know gone to places and taken trips but that was the only time that I've ever seen my mom really just enjoy life you know aside from that she's always just very uptight very stressed very anxious very like you know like in an adrenaline rush consistently you know and so i think as as children of that generation we have to understand that it's not that they want to treat us that way it's just that's all they know they didn't know any better you know it's like yeah. imagine like how i was talking about earlier about a man's masculinity rights to be able to provide imagine your father knowing that he's a man and he should be the provider. He should be giving you ex- this lifestyle as your as a child, as his wife, and he can't because he, he can't get out of his environment, of his situation. Imagine how stressful, how, how much weight that's on your shoulders, how depressing that can be, right? So what's going to be the natural reaction for them to, if you fuck up, you're... Because you got to realize something. If you fuck up, if you fuck up in school or if you fuck up in life and yeah. you go to jail or some shit like that happens, guess who is affected? Yeah. Your mm-hmm. father, your mother. And they're barely surviving. And so anything that, that adds on to more of that stress and that responsibility, Fast. how do you expect them to react? Yeah. True. And they got to get you out of that. And Now you're putting them in a worse situation. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
And if you tell your parents, like, oh, you don't love me, oh, you don't do this, you don't spend time with me, like, what do you think that's doing? That's making them feel like even more of a miserable parent. I think the, yeah. to end on that, it's like, and I've realized this with, like, with the younger generation is we tend to blame our parents for what we're living through right now. And even as grown adults, you got to realize something. Your parents are not at fault for the way you're living because mm -mm. now it's your choice. Yep. You have an opportunity. You have a choice to make. And it's up to you to go get what you want. You want a nice car. You want a nice house. You want a nice living spot. You want it's your not your parents' space. responsibility. Go ahead. It's not your parents' responsibility to pay your car note and your rent. Mm -hmm. It's not. And, and if you're literally not doing anything to make yourself in a better situation, bro, stop complaining. Yep. In better term, terms, just shut the fuck up. For real. Hey, you shut up, get to work, put your head down and keep going. Yep. Stop going out with your friends on the weekends and wasting mm. all the money you don't have. Stop doing this. Stop doing everything that's setting you back. If you got to stay in one one weekend to make yourself better, why not, bro? 100%. And I feel like that's kind of like uh, kind of bringing back to like the whole toxic masculinity aspect of things, right? We we want to – society right now is like, oh, like – should be babied or you should be understood or you yeah. should be there's like fuck no should like you're mad. a grown ass adult like like there's the fuck there's up. i'll give you the i'll give you the nice side of it right like i'll be sensitive to what you're saying i understand but at the end of this conversation i want to hear what's the solution mm. what do you got planned in order for us to get out of this mm. you got nothing planned i don't want to hear it no more yep stop it there dog yep. like you can't it's a you team can't, effort. Yeah, you can't mm -hmm. complain for fucking 10, 10 hours and 10 days over the same topic when it's not changing. Mm -hmm. Change it now. Yep. Why not now? Why not tomorrow? Yep. If you take 24 hours, take 24 hours. Fuck it. But make sure when the time you wake up again, it's a new opportunity. And I posted this other just the other day. Just because yesterday was bad doesn't mean today it could be that. Mm -hmm. It could be better if you want 100%. to. 100%. So stop. Leave all your problems back there, back there and start off fresh now. Mm -hmm. Um. I love quotes. I know everybody on, on TikTok, IG, and everybody loves <sighs> quotes. You got to hit us with one. Sheesh. One, I feel, I feel yeah. like you got a good one. Bro. Yeah. I feel like, like, this I is feel a, like this back is there, back this there, is if you reach out. This whole, this whole uh, amazing podcast, bro, this whole amazing show. I love discipline, right? And I'm always going to relay everything back to that. I don't want to be motivational. I don't want to be inspirational. I think the best quote that I can give anybody right now is that you're only as good as your bad habits. And that translates to everything else. It's like, if you don't have the life that you want, it's because of you. If you don't have the body that you want, it's because of you. If you don't have the lifestyle, the success, the platform, the status, the social media following, whatever success means to you, yeah. it all has to do with you and your bad habits. God damn, bro. Well, I think it's time to eat <laughs> some tacos. <laughs> my tacos right my now. guy, I, I, I tried to give you flowers earlier, but I know right now is the time. I want to appreciate you for allowing us into your space, into your life, and allowing us to share these stories with everybody listening, man. And we've some of us have only gotten to know you for the last couple hours. I got to know, know you for the last month, month and a half, and. Dude, you are a very motivational, inspirational person, even without you trying. Mm -hmm. Your platform, your work ethic, your way of being inspires others that are watching to even try to mimic something like that. And, dude, you're doing everything correct, dog. Whatever, whatever anybody says, whatever people have said, bro, you are amazing. You're, you're that person. And as Kevin Gates said, bro, you're him. Hey, I yeah, appreciate you, bro. Take exactly. us to like podcast. Make sure you subscribe yeah, and share know. this. And you stay tuned for the next one, man. We out. Good shit. Good shit. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I think I have posted.